Looking back on 8-bit baseball games can kind of be a hazy endeavor. As truly great as many of them were, a lot of those games tend to blur together. You had the ones with a camera behind the plate, the RBI baseball variety, and you had the ones with a camera behind the mound, like bases loaded. Just about every game from that era meets one of those two specifications, and for the most part, they all play about the same. If you have a poor memory, or you've taken one too many two-seamers to the skull, you might remember this game as RBI Baseball. I mean, actually, even if your brain's functioning flawlessly, you might still remember this game as RBI Baseball, but it's actually Baseball Simulator 1000. Released for the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1989, Baseball Simulator 1000 was developed by Culture Brain, the studio behind NES classics like Kung Fu Heroes, Flying Dragon, and one of my favorite RPGs, Little Ninja Brothers. But unfortunately for American gamers, that golden age has ended. Since the closing of its US branch in the 1990s, Culture Brain's games have rarely made it to the States. Fortunately, we have games like this to remember them by. Baseball Simulator 1000 may look a lot like RBI Baseball, and kind of play a lot like RBI Baseball, but this game is also known for a few nasty pitches of its own. So again, gameplay-wise, Baseball Simulator 1000 plays just like RBI Baseball. Fans of Tengen's classic 8-bit baseball game should be immediately comfortable with Culture Brain's game because, apart from some minor subtleties, they're basically the same game. But one of the things that sets Baseball Simulator 1000 apart is its emphasis on customization. Now, Baseball Simulator 1000 wasn't the first NES game to allow you to create players and customize rosters. SNK's Baseball Stars beat Baseball Simulator's throw to the plate, so to speak. But features like that were groundbreaking in 1989 nonetheless, and Baseball Simulator 1000 had a nice set of customization features in its own right. In fact, you can see I'm adjusting this team's lineup to match that of my favorite baseball team's current lineup. Player names and statistics can each be adjusted, as well as their abilities within the allotted point values. And you can actually take that team out onto the field and then play a season with them, which again is a very cool feature for an NES baseball game. Baseball Simulator 1000 also tracks statistics during your season, such as batting average and home runs and wins. I mean, it did save all those stats. Those functions used a battery inside the game cartridge, and by now, a vast majority of those batteries are probably dead, effectively stripping the game's ability to save all those meticulous customizations. Fortunately, the game's other distinguishing feature requires no battery pack. In what kind of seems contrary to the game's title, Baseball Simulator 1000 also offers a very unsimulation like Ultra Mode, in which players actually have special powers. They might be able to turn the ball into a missile that knocks opponents over. Hits may actually cause earthquakes. It's a fun addition, although it is kind of broken thanks to some balance issues. <laughs> Like the best baseball games from this era, Baseball Simulator 1000 is all about its core baseball gameplay. It's still fun to this day, it still controls well, and it's still easy to pick up and lose several hours playing. It's not quite up to the level of other 8-bit baseball icons, but Culture Brain's Baseball Simulator is still batting a thousand for a reason. <laughs>